Hi, my name's Tyler Thurman, and I'm with Tyler Thurman Coaching, my uh, transformative coaching business. And today's video, the transformative coaching video, is titled The Split Mind. Now, if you've listened to any of these other videos, or you, you've uh, followed my work, or you've worked with me personally uh, before, you'll know that I talk about this thing called mind a lot. It's, uh, it's a huge component of the work that I do, the transformative coaching work that I do. And it's, uh, it's largely misunderstood, and I think there's one part of it gets talked about a lot, and then another part not so much, so that's why I call it the split mind. So I want to talk about both pieces together and um, and uh, I think it'll be valuable. So mind gets defined in a lot of different ways, but I'm using it in the, the, the way that the field uh, called the three principles uses it, uh, which is kind of uh, the foundational field for the work that I do. Uh, another foundation for my work is a book called A Course in Miracles. It's kind of a spiritual text, and uh, both fields, or, or one's a field, one's a book, um, <laughs> both of them use the term mind a lot, and in large part, they mean the same things by mind. And, and so the mind that the Three Principles is talking about is essentially the mind of God, right? It is the energy and intelligence behind life. It is, um, for me, it's the source of love, peace, creativity, joy. Um, unconditional love is oftentimes how I define mind. Like it, it's, words can't do it justice. Uh, that's why we talk about it as God sometimes because, and by the way, not the the person image that most people have of God, which is like the, the bearded man in the sky. Um, that's just us creating God in our physical likeness. Um, but I, I mean something different when I use that word God and I use that word mind. I mean this energy, this spiritual force, this spiritual mind. So another way to think about mind is to distinguish it with the body, right? I have a, a, another video and article based on that, which is we aren't bodies, we're actually minds. And, and that's not to say we're our brain, because that's a physical organ. We are this intelligence, this mind. Um, and so, the you know, the three principles, we largely refer to mind as and a component, or really, the truth of who we are. We are this, we are of this mind. We are of this, this beautiful spiritual essence. This, we are unconditional love. That is the nature of who we are. And, um, and I, I really, really, truly believe that. And we as a whole, as a human race, the human condition, we largely don't experience ourselves as that mind, right? We, you know, most people, when I meet them and I ask, hey, you know, who are you? <laughs> they don't say, I'm unconditional love, <laughs> right? <laughs> they have this story about who they are. They have identified, and I'm, you know, as guilty of this as anybody else. Um, they have identified with themselves as being something other than that mind of God. Right? We are a separate self. We are a body. We are our personality. We are these thoughts that we have about ourselves. We think we're this collection of experiences that we've had throughout our life. 
um, these thoughts and these feelings and these places that our body has been, right? We think, we think that's us. And that's, that's kind of the other component of the mind. It's, it's the false self. It's this false identity um, uh, that the Course in Miracles talks about as the ego. So it is the self, the self that we think we are. And it's largely what we experience ourselves as. We experience ourselves as separate. We experience ourselves as miserable, as anxious, as stressed, as afraid, as hateful, as guilty, as, um, you know, even as happy and excited and, you know, all these different emotions, right? Because what we've been taught innocently but inaccurately in our world culture is that we are our feelings. Uh, we are our experiences, which is just another word for feelings, right? It's another word for emotion. We are our thoughts because if you, you know, study the principles or you, you've studied my work at all, you know that thought creates feeling. There's a thought feeling connection. Um, and so we have learned to identify ourselves as that, as this ego mind. We think we are separate, we think we're bodies, we think we're personalities, we think we are past experiences and accumulation of those, we think we're past thoughts, we think we're past feelings, um, you know, what's happened to us, what we've been through. We identify with all of that. And it is our identification with whoever we think we are that largely creates our experience of life. It binds us in a way to have in large part certain experiences over others. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a split, right? Because we don't really experience this this beautiful self all that often. Some people never uh, remember experiencing that. And, um, you know, it, and so it makes sense that we're largely unaware of who we really are, right? So I wanna, I wanna add something in here uh, because it's very easy to hear what I'm saying as a right and a wrong, a good and a bad, um, as far as what we identify ourselves as, who we identify ourselves as, and those thoughts and feelings that we have. It's very easy to make some of them into good things and some of them into bad things and some of them into right things and some of them into wrong things. But uh, none of that's really accurate in my experience. The, the best distinction I can come up with is truth versus illusion. And that's pretty simple, right? There, there is a truth to who we are, and then there's a falseness of who we are. So let me tell you what I mean by that, which is to say that, and this is one of the biggest insights that I've ever had, the, uh, transformative insight which is I always thought uh, which is uh, similar to what most people think I always thought that the stronger the feeling the stronger the thought and the feeling the more intense you know like a, it's on an 11 it's an 11 on a scale of 1 to 10 in intensity. The stronger the feeling, pleasant or unpleasant, um, 
the truer it was, the more real it was, the more real it is. I always thought that was just kind of a a rule of thumb. Like if it if it feels really intense, then it must be true. So it came as quite the shock to me to have an insight and a revelation that that's not true. That we, as minds, can have thoughts flow through our mind and consequently feelings. And they can be as strong as we've ever felt anything in our life. And they can be absolutely untrue. So we can have thoughts about ourselves that we heavily identify with, usually just because we've had them over and over again, right? And we've never thought to question them. We can have these thoughts that we have and feelings that we heavily identify with, and they can be totally untrue. They can be false can be inaccurate. We can be wrong about ourselves. And let me tell you, that is a beautiful thing. That is a great thing. Because we have largely been taught to identify with our ego thought system. That's all the ego is. Right? We like to complicate the ego. We like to make it into this mysterious being or entity. Our ego is just a thought system. It's a thought system that particularly likes and identifies with being separate, being alone, being miserable, being anxious, being guilty, being afraid, being insecure, being depressed, being stressed. It's a, it's a thought system that thrives on those feelings, those thoughts and those feelings. And we have been taught to identify with that side of the mind. It's kind of an, an illusory side of the mind, right? Because it's just thought. It's just thought. But it turns out thought can be a representation of the truth or it can be a representation of a false self something that's not true and so it's actually incredibly comforting to know that my experience of life growing up which was largely miserable and, and incredibly insecure incredibly afraid and depressed and anxious and lonely and disconnected all of that that I thought for many many years I thought that was me I thought that is the essence of who I am I am a fundamentally broken separate person body individual I am individuated from all these other bodies. And so long as I identified with that, I thought that those thoughts and feelings were true. I thought that they were the truth about me. I suffered. And let me tell you, that is largely a lot of people's experience of life. Sometimes it's unconscious, sometimes it's kind of hidden. Because we've all we've gotten really good at putting on a pretty pe a face a fake smile you know cuz we don't want people to see the truth of who we think we are right we don't want people to know about the us that we think we are because that is not a pretty picture it never is it's insecure it's anxious, it's afraid, it feels guilt and shame and um, hatred and, and stress. We think we're that, so we don't want anybody 
to have a, a window into that self. And rightfully so, right? You know, if that was us, you know, we might want to keep that to ourselves, <laughs> right? Because that it sends most people running for the hills. It's like, oh my gosh, that's that's who you really are? I don't want any part of that. But the beauty of the truth of who we are is that none of that thought system, none of those anxious, insecure, separate, guilty, shameful thoughts can alter, edit, or change even the tiniest piece of the truth of who we are. So in other words, you can think and think and think and think and think yourself into misery for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And the second you let go of that identification and you look towards the truth you'll find it was there waiting the whole time unscathed by the misery, misery and the um, painful experiences that we've been through the memories that we have the traumas it's untouched by all of that. It is the mind of God. That is who we are. We are of that mind. We are made of love. And we've simply been looking in a different direction. Because this world we live in, this physical world that we seem to be in, it's kind of designed as a distraction to keep the ego alive, right? So as long as we keep trying to get it right in the world of form, the world outside of us, that seems to be outside of us, you know, we play king of the hill, we try to win the game of life, you know, get the most money, get the best looking partners, you know, get the most stuff or the best stuff, um, have the best job, you know, have the best looking body, the healthiest body, you know, as long as we're busy trying to win that game, we're distracted. It distracts us from questioning our identification with that ego thought system. We don't question it. We don't think, maybe that's not me. <laughs> We're pretty sure that's us. I know that I was convinced that's who I was for a long, long time. But the second that I got a little bit willing to question that, there, there was a little bit of a space created between me and who I thought I was. That space is all that our spirit needs to come flooding in. It's like if you you open up a, a, a room that's pitch black and on the other side of that door is this brilliantly lit room all you have to do is open it a crack and the light will flood in. It will light up and shine light on all those dark corners. And so it's, it's really useful to begin to know who you are not because as you begin to see oh I'm not my body I'm not my accomplishments I'm not these past experiences that I've accumulated I'm not 
these memories and traumas. I'm not my thoughts that I have about myself. I'm not these strong feelings that I've felt for years. Once you begin to tick those off the list and you begin to, to switch your allegiance, if you will, you begin to see, okay, I'm pretty sure that's not me because it doesn't have the ring of truth to it. And you'll, you'll know what I mean when you stumble on something that has the ring of truth. Most people have had that kind of experience throughout their life, at least once, stumbling upon truth. It's like I think Winston Churchill once said, we all, at some point in our lives, stumble upon great truth. And most people pick themselves us up, dust ourselves off, and move on as if nothing happened. Right? We don't. We think those moments of revelation are the exception. Those moments of unconditional love, that's not the truth of who we are. But it is. And so it's really useful to know that you aren't this separate self. You aren't this ego self. It is not the truth of who you are. So it's not that you have to look towards your ego and analyze the shit out of it, <laughs> which is you know kind of what we've been taught to do in a lot of um, psychotherapy and, and uh, psychological fields. We don't have to analyze it. We just have to bring it to truth. We have to bring it to the light. Because as long as we sort of, uh, you know, in this three principles field, it can be very easy and convenient to just kind of ignore those miserable experiences on the whole. We push them aside. Um, and, and that is another form of putting emphasis on them that makes them real because it, 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 it's become something worth avoiding, something worth pushing aside. But it's, it's nothing more than a, a wisp of smoke. It's, a, you know, it's just thought. It's just thought appearing real. That's all it is. It's a thought that we feel and then we identified with. We thought, oh, this is me. I feel this. It feels strong. So this is the truth of who I am. We made it real. We identified with it. And we suffer because of it. And so I can't really point you in the direction of the truth of who you are. But I can tell you to look in a different direction of the ego thought system. You aren't this physical body. You aren't these thoughts, these insidious thoughts that you have about yourself and about other people and about the world. You aren't this lonely self. You aren't this self that judges good and bad, right and wrong, should and shouldn't. You are made of love. You are made of peace and contentment and joy. And my words don't do it justice. Don't attach yourself to the words. Look behind the words. Look towards the truth. There won't be any words there. There won't be a description. There will only be experience. There will only be insight. There will only be revelation. And you will experience, as you look more and more towards this truth, this essential self that is you, 
it will unveil itself to you. It will reveal itself to you. Because it's been waiting for you to relinquish your hold and your identification with this separate self, this false self, and this beautiful, unblemished, unconditioned love that is this big mind. It's there. It's always been there. It, it is in you. It is you. We are of that. So all you have to do is know who you aren't first and then look in a different direction. <laughs> look towards truth. Look towards unity. Look towards love. But it's really hard to do that when we think we are something other than that. And we suffer because of that. And let me tell you, as I can, you know, personally vouch for, your life will transform. You will begin to experience yourself more and more as that big mind, as that mind of spirit, as that mind of God. And you will experience it as your homecoming. It will have the ring of truth because it is the truth of who you are. And it's waiting for you to return home. So that's the end of this video. If you would like to continue this conversation in any way with me, whether it's watching more of these videos, reading articles, um, if you'd like to develop a one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship with me, I do this professionally. It's, I, I love it. I love being in this transformative conversation, which is to say all it is is a conversation of self-discovery. As you uncover more and more of who you really are, your life will transform. Our lives transform. And if so, you're interested in that, go to my website, www.coachtylerthurman.blogspot.com. And uh, it's kind of my online playground. Have some fun there. And if it occurs to you, reach out to me. And we'll continue this conversation together and we'll uncover the truth of who you are together and so until next time with all the love in the world we'll see you soon